Good morning. I am so sorry. I, well, I was paying attention to time, but it just kind of got away from me, so I uh, started a little bit late. Oh, well. Actually, part of that process was picking up apples we have out front. So thank you so much for the apples. Appreciate that. And what kind are those? Golden and reds. Delicious. Oh, so they are red delicious. Yes. Oh, I thought you guys weren't doing those. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so red delicious and golden delicious. So if someone sneaks out and we don't see him for a while and come back with a bag, know where you've been. <laughs> this was, you know, I, I read stuff all the time and go, I didn't know that. So if I didn't know this, chances are nobody in here did either. So, I know that's kind of weird. But anyway. <laughs> Actually, this is, I hope this doesn't bother anybody, but it, I found it fascinating. It says, why is uncooked meat so bloody compared to, say, turkey? I can't uh, bear to look at the red meat in the grocery store, and that's the main reason I never eat it. How anyone can eat anything so rare uh, is beyond me. Here's the answer. Contrary to a hugely popular assumption, the reddish liquid isn't blood at all. Yeah. Uh, it's just water-soluble protein, and actually give the name of it, which is found in more active muscle tissue. The protein turns red when it's exposed to air, which is why a butcher counter looks like it's covered with blood, but they're not. And the presence of large amounts of the brightly colored protein uh, nutrient is why certain meats are called red meat. Um, in the first place, poultry and fish contain very little of this uh, by comparison. Obviously, very small muscles, yeah, so it makes sense. The protein turns brown as the meat is heated, which is why redness in cooked meat is an indication of juiciness not bloodness, bloodiness. Oh. I'm sorry, we're going to stop church right now. That was, <laughs> that was just a wonderful piece of information. It had nothing to do with anything, but I, I just thought that one was fascinating. All right. Uh, she gone every Sunday morning, and as a matter of fact, Spring Forest she gone eight-hour <coughs> level one course. Okay. Um, our very own Marianne is doing this, and uh, it's going to be October 20th and 21st. Uh, two sessions, one on Friday, one on Saturday, or one on Saturday. No, it's an eight-hour, two hours on two. Friday night, six hours on Saturday. Gotcha. So oh, okay, great. So, yeah, it goes, I mean, this is really in-depth stuff, and if, you're, if you like Shigong at all, this might be a really, really great way to kind of get a little bit more involved with it. So talk to Marianne. There's flyers in the back. So that sounds cool. Is there a cost? Huh? Yes. There is. There is. It's um. It's normally actually if you go anywhere else it's 149, but uh, this time it's it's, it's 99 dollars. So yeah, for a, for a two day that's that's cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, in 1972, the FBI hired its first two female agents, a former nun and a former U.S. Marine. And if the story is true in my family, the U.S. Marine was my brother-in-law's sister. Wow. So, yeah, I knew Nancy pretty well. So, yeah, and I knew she was a former Marine, so I, I guess it makes sense. So, so don't mess with my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a couple of painter saints by the name of John Lennon and George Harlan. Hey, George and John. And John said, words are flying out like endless rain into the paper cup. They slither while they pass. They slip away across the universe. It just sounds like a song, doesn't it? And George, uh, no comment is a comment. <laughs> and other things that make you go, hmm. Uh, some circumstantial evidence is very strong, as when you find a trout in the milk. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Henry David Thoreau, 1817. It makes very little sense, but I understand what he's getting at. So I'll just read it again. Yeah. Some circumstantial evidence is very strong, as when you find a trout in the milk. <laughs> I know, just think about it. It's, uh, I'm not going to no. talk about that anymore. It's just not goofy. It's just goofy. <laughs> Uh, a team effort is a lot of people doing what I say. <laughs> Moderation is the last refuge for the unimagin unimaginative. Hmm. And reality is the other person's have ide ideas of how things should be. Uh, 
Uh, trials by jury have come uh, into wide use only in modern times. During the Middle Ages, it was customary to test an accused person by making him or her go through, through some dreaded ordeal. This was done with the idea that God would protect the innocent or permit the guilty to suffer physical harm. Yeah, you felt my eyes roll, didn't you? <laughs> um, a common form of such trial was ordeal by fire. Red-hot plowshares were sometimes placed in a row. More often, a bed of coals were prepared. While it is still low, the accused was forced to walk across barefoot across the inferno. If he stumbled and burned to death, he was pronounced guilty. If he succeeded in crossing the coals, he was found acquitted. In, uh, it meant extreme danger and fearful pain to be hauled over the coals. Even if the man survived, he never forgot his fearful ordeal. Hence, this phrase for severe testing remains in the language centuries after the barbarous ordeal by fire was abandoned. So, now you know where that term came from. Uh, little children, I know what the names of two angels are, Hark and Harold. <laughs> That's Gregory. This one's, this one's Olive, age nine. Everybody's got it all wrong. Angels don't wear halos anymore. I forget why, but scientists are working on it. <laughs> uh, can you cry underwater? Sure. Yeah. Hmm. How important does a person have to be before they are considered assassinated instead of just murdered? <laughs> and these are complex questions, right? Um, why do you have to put your two cents in, but it's only a penny for your thoughts? What's that extra penny going to? Once you're in heaven, do you get stuck wearing the clothes you were buried in for eternity? <laughs> I've wondered that one. I have wondered that one. So. Yeah, yeah. Jan would probably not, not allow me to be buried in anything I normally wear around the house. <laughs> uh, introduction to the process. Uh, oh, Josie is doing um, a uh, introduction for um, the um, the process. Thank you very much. It doesn't say that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I knew it said that. On the so yeah, Josie, thank you very much. That's Tuesday. And then Wednesday, um, introduction sh to Shigong, Marianne again, 6.30, on the calendar. Thursday, intuitive tarot with Janice. And um, Saturday, the process. That's a full class. That's a full class? OK. So the introduction is on Tuesday. The class Tuesday, is a full. Gotcha. It's a full series. Yeah. So the Tuesday one is just for An people who are interested. And then if they want to do the class, it's actually Saturday. OK. We're actually having a session, right? On Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. You want to solve it? Oh, okay. Oh, so you can have a session. Just yeah. be there Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's sing a song. And you know what? I am pretty sure the song that I've got today, I don't know that I've ever done it, or if I have, it's been a long <laughs> treasure. If that doesn't bring back some memories, wow. I, I, Jan asked me I was going to do leaning today. I haven't done leaning in well over a year or two. But we don't have enough people to do it. So, I mean, it'd be a mess, you know, people trying to push against each other. So we'll do it another time. Yeah. Hey, Jan. Yeah. You want to say something? Eventually. Yeah. We're late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good I don't know if you've ever had flashbacks about old church things. You mean you married Greenwood this weekend? Yeah, that's where a lot of people are. That's where they are. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Here we go. My light's not. Um, I want to chat with you today <coughs> about <laughs> no, this is outside. Um, I want to chat with you today about getting through, getting through. You know, 
it's hard to talk about that because I don't want it to be a downer because I'm not that kind of person. I like to be kind of uplifting and joyful. But you know, we all get we all get hung up. We all get tough times. And when there's tough times, what do we do? How do we get through all of that? Well, there's no one right way to get anything done. But today I want to talk to you about steadfastness. If we can be steadfast, we can get through anything. Steadfast is like the rudder of the ship. You know, the sails billow and they push us along. But if we're steadfast, we're going in a we're going in a direction and we're unstoppable. Unstoppable. A lot of us here have had things that have just big blocks in the middle of the road. True? Uh huh. Uh huh. And sometimes we have to tack around them and, and find our way through. But if we're steadfast. The end result is where we are. The end result is where we want to go. And we may have some shifting to get there, but it's finding that ability to be steadfast. That's a challenge. And there's a lot to that challenge. Um, I've asked different people in the church to read some Bible verses for us. Uh, last time we, I didn't have them all <coughs> tagged in my Bible, so I had different people look for things. So we're going to do something similar to that. Because that was really fun. I don't know. It was fun. So who has number one? The card number one. There should be little numbers at the top corner. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on. Who has number one? Number one should be... Who has first Peter? Nope, that's not right. That was a whole different, whole different lesson I was studying. Never mind. <laughs> okay, who has numbers? Who has it? Who has it? Five. Five. You have three, five, six, four, two, seven. Seven. Start with two. We <laughs> need <laughs> You know why you don't have number one? <laughs> never makes a mistake <laughs> and is just strong and true and has no challenges, sorry. <laughs> We're not it. Bill and I are not it. Oh, so, <laughs> you're going to be laughing about this for days, right? I hope you do. I hope you do. Oh, just remember. <laughs> Number one starts with me. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, whenever you're in the good book, and it says therefore, it's really good to read the verses ahead, ahead of that or before that because it'll tell you what it's there for. But we don't want to do that because that would take away all your fun. So in your own time, therefore, my beloved brethren, Listen, 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 I'm talking to you. And it's not me just talking to you. It's the living light of love speaking words through me. Listen, listen. Up. Therefore, my beloved brethren, I love you. You know that. You know this. We've talked about this before. And you, you've experienced that love, have you not? I love you. You're beloved to me. Beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Abounding in the work of the Lord, abounding in compassion. If you're a follower of the way, it's all about following that compassion. Remember, I showed you a video clip some time ago. Um, it was about the movie... 
It was about Christ. I think you, somebody recommended that to me. I think we did. Um, there was a lot of things that I thought, well, this is not exactly appropriate. But it showed one scene where Jesus and, and his followers were sitting around having um, fish. And they were visiting. And this leper came along, and people were like, get away from me, and then with broom and throwing sticks at him and stuff. And, and uh, Jesus saw him and had this look on his face and grabbed up a fish and went out to him, gave him this fish, and held his hands and touched his face, healed him. And the man went on his way, and he was happy and joyful. And Jesus had this look on oh, wasn't that wonderful? And one guy elbows his buddy and says, that's right. Passion for your fellow man. That's what it's all about. Do that. Be steadfast in that. Uh, immovable, unshakable. Well, kind of like uh, James Bond Martini. Be shaken but not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> you know, life will shake us up. It just does. It's called life for a reason. But if we're un unmixable, unshiftable, if we're Im immovable in this in this aspect. That brings us so much power and so much joy. And let's read some more about the power and the joy of being steadfast. And I'll get back to you in a minute. Who has number two? Number two? All right, Philippians 4. Oh, microphone. Sorry. People on YouTube can't hear without it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Philippians 4, uh, verse 1 and verses 4 to 9. In verse 1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. In verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and it be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace shall be with you. Peace. We want peace. We want to be peaceful. We want our lives to be harmonious. And yet stuff happens. And how do we re how do we find peace amid the storm? We're steadfast in thinking on the things that bring us love and light and joy. If it doesn't bring us love and light and joy, shift out of that thinking about that. There's no room for worry anymore. Yes, you've got to plan ahead, you've got to think ahead, you've got to do what you need to do. Um, you know, it's okay to have concern for the, for the future. I like to have a grocery list. It saves me a lot of time and energy. That's thinking ahead, you know. But I don't worry, oh my gosh, what if my brand of peanut butter is not there? <laughs> we can let that kind of stuff go. But we worry, we hang on. We hang on to this stuff like it's... Life or death. And it's not. It's not life or death. And yet it brings us this fate worse than death because it steals our peace. And when we are going through life and life has its own turmoils and we're not at peace, that robs us of joy. That robs us of this hilarity of being able to see life as, as, a, as a journey of wonderful events. All we can do is experience the sorrow and the pain. That's not to say sorrow and pain doesn't happen. Because it does. But when we're immovable in remembering the truth and focusing on the good stuff, then the bad stuff doesn't have power over us anymore. The challenges of life doesn't have power over us anymore. And who has number three? Isaiah 26, verse 3. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace, 
because he trusts in you. So the steadfast of mind, if you're steadfast of mind, if your mind is locked and loaded, and you're steadfast in that, that's where peace comes from. Who has number four? Uh, Psalm 142, verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me for you will deal bountifully with me. We're all wanting to find this not like are we not? Are we not? When we walk righteous, right wiseness, Righteous, doing the right thing. The right thing is thinking on the things that bring us love and peace and joy. That's the right thing. Even in dark times. It's not to say dark times are not going to happen. But the dark times, when they come, they'll carry us through. It's that rudder that'll carry us through and it'll bring us not only peace, but abundance. Who is by? Mm -hmm. Number five is uh, Psalms 108, verse one. Mm -hmm. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing, I will sing praises, even with my soul. How lovely is that? When your heart is steadfast, you can sing. Uh, doesn't mean you're gonna sing on key, or well. <laughs> but when you're singing with your soul, there's that joyfulness that cannot be stolen from you. So peace and joy and abundance all come from this steadfastness. Who has, you were five in your six. Let's jump back up here. There was no planning in this. I'm excited. <laughs> Psalms 57, seven. My heart is steadfast, O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises. Thank you. Number seven, that'd be you. I have Psalm 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Love it. Love this. And here's why I love this. Because we don't have to have that steadfast spirit. It's not like we've got to muster it up somewhere. It's a gift. You can ask for it. Are you struggling? Are you suffering? Are you being swayed back and forth with what's going on in the news and what's going on in the world and what's going on in your neighbors and what's going on with your family? Are you, are you being swayed back and forth? Ask for steadfastness. Steadfastness to be given to you. It's a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. Ask for it. Now here's the key with asking for it. You've got to stop running and be still and have to receive. Sometimes we get in this mode of either we're go, 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 busy, 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 um, and we get an autopilot, and we just kind of blah, 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 and we don't, I mean, you've done blah, 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 blah. Haven't you done that before? Right. I know, you like that. So that's a technical term. You can use that anytime you want. But we get that way, and when we do that, not only does the thinking brain shut down, but the heart shuts down. And we are disconnected from spirit. There's a spiritual connection that we have that is unbreakable. It's always there. We can clutter it up. We can clutter it up with worry and fear and dread and frustration. The shoulda, coulda, wouldas, that's all his best past history. Oughta, gotta, must, that's in the future. Shoulda, coulda, done, shoulda, coulda, woulda done that. Oughta, gotta, must do this. And that robs us from being in the here and now. And in the here and now, 
That's where our power is to change everything. Change ourselves, change the world. You came to change the world, and you came to change it starting in here. And you start with being steadfast. And you become steadfast by slowing down enough, giving yourself space enough to receive. Why? <laughs> Don't you just love them? <laughs> they, they're symbolic of our thoughts. <laughs> right? Very symbolic. They would show up just now. And, the, and, have you, and a fly will worry you to death. You know, just when you think it's gone, it's back. And then you think it's gone, it's back. So it is with our thoughts. But when you're steadfast, and immovable about that. That does not mean you're stuck. It just means you're in the groove, on your way, headed in the, in the right direction. When you're on that sacred path, then nothing can distract you. Certainly it's a little flight, but it's not going to knock you off your path. And when you're not steadfast, even having a fly will send you to bed in tears because, oh my gosh, it's so stressed. And, and then when something really traumatic comes along, you have no reserves to deal with it. If you want reserves to deal with life, get a life preserver. You know, get hooked up. The hooked up is already happening. But awareness opens that channel so we have the awareness of that being hooked up. The part of you that is eternal, that lives beyond this physical form, is connected to divine spirit that is eternal and is beyond physical form. But through, all, through that, this physical world is manifested. When we can be aware of, oh my gosh, here I am, let me just take a note of who I am, where I'm at, what's going on, just being where you are. This really isn't fun, but be there. <clears throat> be fully present in this moment. And that changes the next moment. And here's the other thing about steadfastness I want to share with you. And then I want us to do a guide meditation. When we are steadfast, we have a goal. We know who we are, and we know where we're going. Now, we all have this goal, peace, love, joy, understanding, enlightenment, all of those things. We have that. And what are other physical goals we have along the way? Better job, better car, whatever. Those are out there as well. But we forget our purpose here. You need both anchor points. Who are you here? What is your purpose? And this hangs us up. Here's why it hangs us up. We think our purpose has to be something we do. Mm -mm. Your purpose is who you are. And when you find your purpose of who you are, your life is lived purposefully. And you're steadfast. That locks and loads the steadfastness. So let me, let me say this a different way so I can be really, really clear on this. If you know what you came here to be, you'll know what you came here to do. Some came here to be hospitable. You're around them, you feel safe, you feel welcome, you feel loved. Have you ever been around somebody like that? It doesn't matter whether they're a legal secretary or, or a street sweeper or a CEO. You're going to feel welcome in their presence because that's their purpose. And how they live their lives, that purpose is going to emerge in whatever they choose to do. Have you ever known somebody who's just a teacher? Wherever you went, they had something they could impart or share information with you. That's their purpose. It may not be a physical teacher, but that's their purpose. And they will be in that role of guiding you whenever you need it. Because that's the purpose they came here to do. Does that make sense? Your purpose you're already doing. You just may not know it. You're already doing your purpose. What is the thing that people say the most about you? Hopefully it's nice and kind. 
If it's not, get new friends. Because <laughs> I'm not telling you the truth. What about you keeps coming up in conversations? What about you, do you keep finding yourself in the same pattern or of the same role, the same activity? If it's not a positive one, take a look at that. Because it could be a dark shadow of what you're really meant to do. And there's a whole other message on that one. Uh, what do you think Sandra's purpose is? Teach. 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 What do you think William's purpose is? Compassion. Hmm? Compassion. Compassion. He is like the rock of compassion. He is a rock of Have you ever had a William hug? Oh my God. Best thing in the whole world. Locks you and loads you for here and now, brings you back present. It's amazing. Well, you know, my, my purpose is, is um, communication. I had a really tough time in my life when everything I said was twisted or distorted or thrown back in my face as, as hate. Um, and I'm really grateful for that because that taught me that there's got to be a way to communicate. The words I'm saying are not the words that person is hearing. So there's some sort of a communication breakdown. So my whole life has been dedicated to helping people hear their truth. And I do that by standing in my truth. You don't have to have the same truth. I'm not here to tell you what to believe or what to think. Mm, no. I'm standing in my truth so I can reflect to you what truth feels like so you can find your truth. That's my purpose in life. And I can do that in lots of different ways. And I do do that in lots of different ways. What do you think your purpose is? I challenge you to ponder that. Ponder that. Because that's going to be your, your, your anchor. And then when you're steadfast, you're pointed in the right direction, you will be unshakable. You'll be immovable in being able to, there's that bucket. You'll be, you'll be, see, distracted. <laughs> immovable. You'll be locked and loaded. And that's what your heart, is, soul is wanting. Because when you're locked and loaded, then everything else is just stuck. And you know that. You want that to be true for you. It's just important to take a step back. Take a moment. Get out of the shoulda, coulda, what is oughta, have gotta, must, and into the here and now, what's my truth? What's my truth? What do I do? How am I functioning the most effectively? Your soul knows the truth of it. Your soul knows the truth of it. And other people are going to tell you what you do wrong. Well, I hate that. Why do I do that? <laughs> Shake that off. <laughs> People will tell you what they disapprove of. Stop listening to that crap. Find your own truth. Find your tribe that will reflect back to you your truth so you can see. Make sense? Let's do... Um, when you first think of meditation, I'm kind of all. Yeah, stupid. Yeah.